Thank you. So good afternoon, everybody. It has been a wonderful session wherein we've been talking about pediatric diabetes, type 1 diabetes, the care that we are able to give to our kids. And it was so heart touching to listen to all my speakers. You know, they I have been learning from them. So here I am going to present maybe a brief of whatever I've learned from the seniors over here. Thank you, chairpersons, for a wonderful in introduction. Um, can I have my slides? So now in this time and era where we talk about technology, where we talk about integrating care with technology, how can we not talk about CGMS and its use in our kids with diabetes? And let us say, it's not just type one that we'll talk about, we'll talk about the use of CGMS in type two as well. So these are the CGMS which are uh, available. There is the Dexcom, there is the Abbott Freestyle Libre. We also have the Libre Pro. There is the Medtronic uh, Guardian and we have a new one, the Indian one, the Circa CGM. I think a lot of companies are now working on bringing out newer continuous glucose monitoring systems into the market. And I think it is high time that we bring out our own Indian thing for more value addition. Um, these are the consensus guidelines that a lot of uh, mentors from Diabetes India were part of. Now, when we talk about continuous glucose monitoring, in 2023, these guidelines are from 2019, but in 2023, we say whenever there are some certain number of indications, please go ahead and use these continuous glucose monitoring systems in, for your kids and for your adolescents. So now some, some basic indications are whenever you feel that there is a disparity between the fasting PPF, PPBS, the SMBG readings and the HB1C. Whenever there is an HB1C which is more than 7.5 but still the HB1C and uh, the SMBG readings are not matching. When the target HB1C is not achieved, when there is some risk of hypoglycemic episodes, when the patient requires it as a tool for empowerment. That is something very importantly that we need to understand that it is going to be a tool for empowering the kids, the adolescents and even the adults to understand how to make changes to the regimen. When somebody is non-compliant to treatment, and very recently, chairpersons, we have been trying to formulate an article wherein we are talking about the use of CGM in non-diabetic. So a lot of uh, social media is flooded with people using the Ultra HQ, that is the Libre being used for non-diabetic and people with PCOS, girls with PCOS also. So I'll be taking a couple of cases and very briefly I'll be uh, showing how CGMS can be helpful in different sort of cases in different age groups. So I start with an 11 year old girl. Uh, she has an HB1C which is fairly good for an 11 year old kid with type 1 diabetes 7.4. Now, she does not know that, you know, how do I uh, take care of my readings? How do I take care of my diabetes? How is it influencing my day-to-day -day activity? And she does not want to prick herself. How many times have we asked our kids to monitor themselves? Maybe once a day, twice a day, thrice a day. We do a five-point SMBG. And it is tough. Believe me, it is very, very tough to even prick yourself. Try and do it for maybe a week and you'll be tired. So... We suggested her to undergo a CGMS. Money was not an issue for this girl's parents. And we were able to show to her parents that in spite of a good HB1C of 7.4, there was still a lot of troughs and valleys on her uh, glycemic variability. So now we talk about time and range. We just don't talk about HB1C. We just don't talk about fasting and PPBS. We talk about the time and range that this girl has to be in, which is 70% of the time of the preset uh, you know, time and range that we have set for this girl, which might be 80 to 180 because she's only 11 years old. So if you can appreciate these graphs, these are going to help us educate the parents as well as the girl onto understanding how her different meal patterns on various different days. So there is an interday variation and intraday variation that can be taught to these uh, kids, that can be taught to the guardians of these kids. Then comes a very important question of hypoglycemia. All of us are scared of hypos. Um, be it me, be it the chairpersons, I think all the healthcare professionals in the room are scared of hypos. Not for ourselves, but for our kids, for the adolescents who are on insulin. And this is a similar case of a 14-year-old girl with type 1 diabetes of around 2 years. She has an HB1C of 8.9. 
but her parents are reluctant into up titrating the therapy because they feel that once her sugars are dropping she'll have some sort of fits and seizures which again is going to put us into a tough position that without increasing or up titrating the insulin doses how are you going to achieve a good hb1c how are you going to have a good smbg so now we put her on a cgm and we were able to find out that it's not the hyperglycemia but the rebound hyperglycemia that was contributing to 8.9 so if you see there was so much of asymptomatic overnight hyperglycemia over here on a certain number of days for this girl that contributed to her uncontrolled glycemic status so now this becomes a little easy for us for us to titrate her insulin dose because again we are coaches and we are not completely going to say that you know this thing is 100% going to act for you we have to be coach and we have to uh, you know teach the guardian also that you will have to understand and learn how to titrate the doses of the insulin based on the readings of the cgm that are there for your kid so we were able to you know reduce her basal dosage of her pump by 25% based on the cgm reading and she's doing fairly well um this is now my kids are getting elder and elder from 11 14 and now we have an 18 year old kid doing a triathlon so now um in this 2023 we have various uh, you know very active uh, t1ds and all of them come to us and teach us how should we be teaching the others who are physically active into taking care of their sugars so this was a kid who actually taught us that you know once when he was biking in spite of his sugars being high once he started to bike his sugar started to fall and then what he did every hour he would take a 75 g of glucose so that his sugars don't fall so this is very interesting because we ourselves are not going to try it on ourselves we are not going to be doing a triathlon or train for one not many of our patients would be doing that even with type 2 but this kid who is an 18 year old was very very happy to try and you know synchronize his cgm with his pump and you know he came back and told me that this is how it is done and that's the learning process it's an exchange process between our uh, you know kids with t1d and ourselves so i'll tell you another case now this is an adult type 1 a 27 year old businessman sedentary lifestyle t1d since 6 years on glycine and aspart again doing fairly well 7.1 now how do you think that this uh, candidate is a good candidate for cgms but since he has a sedentary lifestyle and you want to educate this person that type 1 diabetes is going to contribute to your overall complications further in life even when today you are at a 7.1 hb1c tomorrow it it may not be so tomorrow your sugars will be different and that is why we asked him to do a simple libre now this libre had time in range the daily patterns and even the low glucose events and anybody with type 1 diabetes or taking care of a type 1 diabetes will tell me that hypoglycemia is something that you cannot ignore it will happen it is bound to happen you just have to take care that you educate the adult or the kid what are the symptoms of uh, hypoglycemia and how to take care of it or how to prevent it to the least of the probability so this cgms for this adult 27 year old made us realize that every adult man has also with type 1 diabetes should also be made aware that such a system of continuous glucose monitoring is available and could be beneficial to him this is again uh, this was a, a snapshot of after 3 months and after that after 3 months again older from 2022 but are showing us that from 7.1 the person can go to a worsening of blood sugars but can again go back to 7.6 and again this happens this happens irrespective of the type 1 a uh, type of diabetes but it happens more so with type 1 and all of us will have to agree when we say this that it is difficult to manage and cgms is one tool that will help us now this was from a patient's perspective but also as healthcare professionals when the paper of the inference or the data that comes out of cgms it comes to us it's really overwhelming it's a lot of data 
I was just sitting with a statistician over here. She's a senior statistician. And she was showing me the data and it is overwhelming because somewhere we've taken biology to avoid the numbers, but you cannot avoid numbers when you want to treat people with diabetes. So when you see such a graph, which has so much of inter and intraday variations, you want to learn how to interpret this CGM, uh, you know, data inference. So there are some three simple steps that I thought that I would like to share with the people here. First is try to understand what the what are the metrics. So there are simple metrics. Try to understand what is the time and range metric that you want. Set up a target for the for your particular person with diabetes. Think about how much of time above range and time below range is this person with diabetes spending. And this will become easier for us as healthcare professionals and also for the adults and adolescents with uh, diabetes to understand where they are standing and where do they have to up titrate or down titrate their therapy. Another important step is knowing about the glucose variability. So we have to understand that there are um, day-to-day -day variations and then there are intraday variations and every uh, day is a different day not one day a monday is different from a saturday and a wednesday is different from a thursday so you cannot expect the same sort of glycemic variability to persist all across your life so again a cgms is a tool which can help us to find out as we age as our hormones change with our menstrual cycle and for the men for their diurnal cycles also how that sugar uh, glycemic variability is changing the third and the most important point is hypoglycemia so now how much ever we shy away or we are scared of it hypoglycemia is an evident thing and the most important thing to talk about in our opds and even in halls so we have to understand and find out when did these hypoglycemic events occur? Why did they occur? And how can we prevent them from occurring again? So very simple three steps that we can follow to use the CGM data. And how much ever challenging it is, the numbers could be used very well. And the CGM, the data that comes out when you print it through the uh, you know, software, there are very beautiful pie charts that come out for us to understand where we are standing. So I'm almost at to uh, some of my last slides. The other things that we don't think of is for a person with diabetes, whenever they are on continuous glucose monitoring, the kids or the adolescents, they have some very particular troubles. You know, it is painful to wear a sensor. It gets irritable when they get wet. Uh, there could be skin rashes. The skin could be sensitive. There could be a part in your hand, which is OK. But when you wear it on your stomach, it's not OK. When you want to wear it on your thigh, it's fine. But when you want to wear it somewhere else, maybe on the back of your arm, you don't feel comfortable. So all of these are some very, uh, you know, different sort of uh, challenges that we all face when we are prescribing a CGM to kids and adolescents. There are some very pretty patches that are available, but I'm not sure how much they are able to uh, take care of the irritability part or about the part that, you know, I just don't want to do it. <laughs> but these are some really good solutions. So I come to my summarization that measurement of glucose level using a CGM system is going to provide us with opportunities to understand the effects of the diet, the physical activity and the sort of work that we are doing that has, uh, you know, affected us or the person with diabetes, be it any sort of diabetes. CGM is a very powerful tool. If you use it correctly, we can benefit our patients. We can benefit the person with diabetes in a tremendous manner, be it for the management of hypers or be it for the prevention of hypos. It's a decision-making tool. Both, again, it's, it's a teamwork. It has to be, you know, a two-way traffic between the person with diabetes and the healthcare professional. We have to sit together. We have to explain and empower the person with diabetes. For somebody who is having a very hectic lifestyle, CGM is really a boon. And I think that's my summarization. It's a very powerful tool. Will help us to adjust insulin, but not just insulin. There are people using it to adjust their diet and to adjust their normal routine physical activity also. So with that, I'm going to hand over back to our chairpersons. Thank you so much.